everybody, it's Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck for Wine Library TV, and I'm in Vegas, baby. And you know, you know about the gambling and all the craziness, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but it is quickly becoming a culinary and wine institution. More master sommeliers in Vegas than any other city in the world. And we're here at the Wynn, which is a fabulous place, at the Country Club, you know, just a gorgeous setting. And they have a pretty sweet big list here. I noticed there's a little bottle of uh, Camus Cabernet in the back end. Say hi to my friend Tony. Hello. Tony is the uh, CEO extraordinaire from Zappos. Tony, say hello to the Vaniacs. Hello. Tony, what's your thing with wine? Do you drink it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Uh, I'm normally more of a vodka drinker, but I know that. Uh, you may uh, educate me today. And I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. So, what I really want to do, as I've been doing ra randomly, is basically review the list itself instead of wines. We've done that a couple times. So, you can see it's uh, the Country Club, uh, New American Steakhouse. Um, looks like there's about 11 pages of goodness in here. So, let's start going through it. On the sparkling white side, uh, I'm, you know, all the relative characters. You've got a lot of the big names, PJ, Clico, Rotor. Uh, I've got to admit, I'm pretty disappointed that we're not seeing any grower champagnes. This is a constant problem with lists out there. Um, the, this, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm seeing Moet, Laurent Perrier, Krug, Louvre Clico, but nothing from Terry Thies, which I think is a major oversight um, and, a, and a little bit of a problem. Um, there's a nice little uh, loop of white wines, including Turley's White Goat, which I think is an interesting wine, off-whites, um, Pinot Gris, Rieslings, but again, very small list, about six or seven of those. Um, four Sauvignon Blancs from California, it's fine. Quite an extensive list of California Chardonnay. All the characters, you know, the Chalk Hill, the Cake Bread, the Matanzas Creek, the Ramey, the Rombauer, the Talbot, all the standard stuff again coming through. And right off the bat, going into this very quickly, I'm starting to see a very standard, non-outside-the-box list, which is probably fine. I mean, which is pretty vegas -y. You know, you're looking for big brands, and that's what they're doing. But again, not something that I would say, if you're at the win, as a wine lover, you need to go out and get to this list. Now, I could be wrong. I'm jumping the gun. We're only two pages in. Let's keep going. There are a couple of white burgundies, which are nice to see, mainly 2006 vintage. Remember, if you can find 2005 white burgundies, that's the vintage you want to play with. Pretty small list of Pinot Noir. Um, only about 10 here, which is pretty surprising. Of course, you see William Salem um, at the end here. Five Merlots, so there you go. You know, after uh, Sideways, more Pinots than Merlots, which prior to Sideways and Hollywood telling us to drink Pinot Noir would never, ever be the case. Um, four or five uh, Syrahs, uh, six or seven Zins. Uh, the highlights there, again, of the eight Zinfandels, three are Turley. Again, we're not seeing a big, check this out. Three Turley Zins, a Segacio, a Ridge, a Raffinelli, a Martinelli, a Duckhorn, I mean, this is standard city again, so not super outside the box. Big names, quality producers, don't get me wrong, but if you're looking to be a little bit outside the box, you're, you're, not, you're not finding that there. Now, Meritage and Red Blends are awesome. Um, always a lot of fun. They've got Bond, which is a great uh, addition. Um, I think they did a nice job here. I see some Peter Michael. Um, water is being poured. Um, so, uh, Swanson Alexa. Again, not too bad, but again, you know, unlike some of the other reviews, we've really been standard set. Now, this is a steakhouse. Uh, well, no, you... actually, so this is actually one of the few places that's open for lunch. So I'm sure the other places that are only open for dinner have better wine selections. Yeah, and I've been to some of them. And by the way, this wine selection, Tony, just so you know, is not bad. It's just very, very standard. It's all the stuff that you kind of always see. You know, kind of like going to a Morton Steakhouse or Ruth's Chris. I mean, the selections are not poor. And it's really funny. I mean, here you go. Another classic example. Look how many California Cabernets there are. So, I mean, for a standard wine drinker, you'll really, really... Um, you know, be happy because you're going to have your Maris, you're going to have your Silver Oak, you're going to have your Farniente, you're going to have your Ghost Block. By the way, Ghost Block, really good stuff. That would be my recommendation if you're doing a Cabernet from these guys. 175 you know, it's Vegas. Um, what is normal? Yeah, I would say probably $100 on a list would be fair, 100 a quarter. And then when you go to a, the actual... Uh, Wine store? Yeah. 60 70 So, um, there's... Some international love. We get two wines from Spain, which I would say, you know, one wine from South America, which is Casa La Postel. Um, we get some Bordeaux, you know, 
crazy high prices. For example, you know, I'm seeing like Shovel Blanc 98, 1,090 a bottle. These are pricey price points. Um, a couple Italians, you get some Allegrini. Um, you know, Australia, you get four wines from Australia. Torbrick, Torlato, 100 acre. Um, fine, a couple large formats, double magnums. Um, and then a couple dessert wines, Farniente, um, Croft, things of that nature. You wanna hold this for a second? Sure. I'll recap with this, I mean, you know, you know, obviously, I've given you the sense that you know it's a standard list. I wouldn't say it's a screaming value, but I'm going to kind of shuffle through it real quick one more time and give you kind of my highlights. That if you do come here, and it is a beautiful place. I heard the food is good. Have you been here? Uh, I've been here for lunch. And how is it? Uh, it was alright. I've, heard, I've yeah. heard some good things about it, actually. So let me give you a couple of um, my picks if you do actually come to here uh, and eat here. I think that the. Um, um, the John Anthony Church Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc at $49 is a steal. John Anthony is a tremendous producer um, out of uh, Carneros. If you've never had it, highly recommend uh, going there. I'm also pretty uh, happy with their selection on the Tandem 2003 Chardonnay, if that is the actual vintage. A little bit older, a little bit more golden, a little bit more drinkable, and at $95, a tremendous price point. Um, on the Pinots, I'm going to kind of skip across, skip the Pinot as well, to be honest with you. Um, you know, not that much really on the Syrah end that gets me excited. Um, again, uh, on the Meritage blend, on the blends here, I think, you know, if you want to be a baller, um, the Robert Foley Claret 2005 at 203 bucks in comparison to some of the other five or $600 wines they have here from, let's say, a Musgouche or Bond or even Cane, for Cane 5 to be 266 and Foley Claret to be 203, that's a screamer. Foley stands out. So if you're balling, um, definitely item number 36148, the Foley Claret. I think is a huge coup. The cabs, again, I would probably go with the Ghost Block 04. I'm very high on that. On the world selections, there's nothing that really stands out to me um, except maybe the View Telegraph shutting up the Pop 05 if you can't for an hour or two, if you've got the time here at $153. Is Fair enough in comparison. Um, on the Italian front, I would totally give a, a pass. Same with the Australian front. Same with the mags, the double mags. Um, there's some half bottles, which are nice. Uh, some Germans. Uh, there's some interesting wines by the glass. I'd probably go with either, um, let's see here, probably the Willa McKenzie Pinot Noir 06 and $19 by the glass stands out for me here. All in all, the Country Club at the Wynn, gorgeous place, always fun to be in Vegas, but really not the wine list that has me so excited. Probably as a wine list, I would score 83, 84 points. And ultimately, um, if you're into wine and that's how you're making your decisions, I would say that the Country Club at the win is a pass. We'll see you next time on Wine Library TV because remember, you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Oh, question of the day. I always forget. What is the best wine list you've come across in the last week or month? See you next time.